Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Diane Chronic, your host here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 favorite PvE specials in Destiny 2. Of course, as always, it's a completely subjective list based on my own opinion of how I play with the weapons that I play with. Generally, I play or I consider a lot of these weapons in the Grandmaster to Master Nightfalls, in the high level raids, in the new activities, the things that you need the biggest bang for your buck. And of course, I've also measured the DPS and a bunch of numbers about them. So I also have empirical data to match up with my subjective data. Data. Subjective data. That's a funny thing to say. <laughs> and of course, as always, there's going to be weapons that are not on my list that you may like. Let me know in the comments down below what weapons those are. There's obviously a lot of weapons that I may miss out on, certain weapons I'm not using properly, but of course, let me know why. Don't be one of those guys that just goes, I can't believe this idiot didn't even consider this weapon. It's like the best weapon in the game. And then I have to go down in the comments and just absolutely dunk on you by providing the research that I've done at the different like GG pages, looking at the stats, talking about how you'd use certain things and how I, you've probably never done a Grandmaster Nightfall. That's called a mic drop. Don't make me do it. What I'm trying to say is be kind. We're all human here. And of course, along the way, you can be seeing pictures of this spreadsheet that I made for you guys, fully public for you guys to use. All you have to do to access the spreadsheet is go to my Discord server, link in the description down below. And in the Discord server, there's going to be a channel called hashtag spreadsheets docs. And around the date that this video came out in, you'll be able to find a link to that spreadsheet, as well as all of my other spreadsheets for all the PvE, PvP, exotic armors, and all the builds that I also create. All the documents are there. And of course, the great community, the Tiger's Den, that I have on Discord, so stick around. Moving on to the main section of the video, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into the spreadsheet. In case you've never seen these before, this is what they look like. Dark theme, pictures out, the color coded, links to certain quests of exotics, of rituals, uh, the different catalysts, how to get certain things, the, my recommendations for the perks, the mods for all the different legendary options, honorable mentions, my top 10, and of course, the beautiful DPS spreadsheets. Talking about all the different numbers for all the different things, including the four new columns that I added this season with a crit factor, because not every weapon is expected to get the same number of crits and this will help you get a better understanding of the actual real performance of all these weapons on top of the fact that legendary weapons can have mods for major and boss spec so they should be doing slightly more damage with that so this spreadsheet is going to be the best version that it's ever been and i have some ideas to make it even better in the future before i get into the top 10 i wanted to talk very briefly about the different archetypes of weapon i'm not going to go as in detail as i usually do but i just wanted to talk about the general idea of certain weapon types why they're performing the way they are and some general ideas and then go through the top 10. First and foremost we have the grenade launchers which I find to be one of the worst performing weapons in the game. Obviously exceptions here with the horde and mountain top are doing really really well but if you look in comparison for example a kinetic spike grenade grenade launcher malicious birthright 18,000 damage per shot and then a kinetic spike grenade grenade launcher 26,000. So 26,000 compared to 18,000 certain weapons are just not performing as well as they should and a lot of people talking about truth teller being the new mountain top i just disagree completely i mean look at this dps look at this damage look at this it's it's nowhere near it in my opinion the replacement for mountain top is going to be with a horde i'll talk more in detail about that when i get to it up next we have these snipers in my opinion these snipers need a pretty significant buff to them they're doing pretty poorly not only in the full ammo damage but their dps they're also really hard to use you have to get the headshots to get any number amount of damage it's like a three times multiplier for crit damage yes they can be used from far away so they're safer but like the only sniper worth talking about is going to be izanagi's burden Borgalis has that weird double damage thing, but it's hard to activate. It's very inconsistent, and, you know, it's it's not as good, in my opinion. This is not good. So, in general, in my opinion, even though we had that buff and debuff in Shadowkeep and Post Dawn that was back and forth, it's in the worst place it's ever been, and I definitely think it needs a big buff. My opinion, just make Izanagi's Burden take a bit more of a tumble in the full ammo damage and raise all the other sniper rifles up. There shouldn't be a problem. For the Trace Rifles, there's a number of different Trace Rifles in the game. Prometheus Lens, Runus Effigy, Cold Heart, and Cold Heart seems to be doing the best with a pretty impressive DPS and full ammo damage, I might add. However, because of the fact of how they're built, you have to be looking at the target, shooting at them for the full 7 seconds it takes to use 101 ammo, makes it very dangerous to use. In higher level plays, you want a weapon that can maintain its DPS while being able to go in and out of cover which is why Mountaintop is doing so well, and Witherhorde's doing well, and even Jotun, that weapons that are doing poor DPS compared to others, are doing well because they can go in and out of cover, reload behind cover, and still maintain their DPS. And Coldheart just doesn't do that. 
Next up, we have the Fusion Rifles. There's a number of really nice Fusion Rifles that are doing pretty great DPS, including the Loaded Question of 17,500 DPS, nearly 500,000 total ammo damage. Fusion Rifles always take me by surprise, and I highly recommend you check them out. So actually a lot of really good ones, even outside that of the Loaded Questions, that are still doing really well. So Fusion Rifles are gonna be the pro tip here. Try them, they're safer than shotguns, used at a farther range, easier to use, they're doing well. And lastly, we have the shotguns. Obviously the king of the crop, the shotguns are doing very well these days, having some pretty impressive DPS, pretty impressive full ammo damage, their exotics are doing really well, their legendaries are doing really well. The obvious caveat is that they're dangerous, so they can't be used in close range without getting just killed because, you know, in high level play, Grandmaster Nightfalls and Rays, being near enemies is pretty much a death sentence. So shotguns fall off a little bit because of that, but they're still really effective and pretty much everything. Right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the top 10, starting up with the loaded question. And as I mentioned before, these fusion rifles across the board are actually doing pretty well these days, with the loaded question having that reservoir burst extra damage when your magazine is full, and it has auto loading, meaning that you can shoot that extra damage burst and then switch weapons, use your primary for three seconds, switch back, and you have that damage again. Loaded Question is really good for what it does. Obviously, it's going to be sunsetting soon, so you're going to need a replacement. My recommendation, use one of the precision options. My personal favorite, Main Ingredient, because it can have auto-loading holster and high-impact reserves. So Main main Ingredient is going to be your best option. And Hollow Words, the thing we get in Umbral Engrams these days, has also a couple of good options as well, like Vorpal Weapon, helping you do more damage against bosses and mini-bosses. Just don't just do what I do and just go, shotguns are better, I'm not even going to try fusion rifles, because they're doing well. Coming up at number 9 is a bit of a weird one. We have the fourth horseman, the best DPS in the game for all the weapons that I measured, and this is not even the upper bound. Right now it's a very inconsistent weapon. If you fire all the shots at a single target with the special perk called Broadside, you should get more damage with each successive shot. And with the extra shot in your magazine up to five, with the catalyst opposed to four, you should do even more damage with that fifth shot. But every time I tested the weapon, it resets halfway through. First shot normal, second shot a little bit more damage, third shot even more damage, and then four shots back down to normal. I don't know why, even though I'm holding the trigger down the entire time, the damage resets all over the place. On top of the fact that it's very difficult to control, so you have to have a very large target to be able to actually dump that ammo in, and on top of that, the reload kind of kills it uh, in many ways. Now this reload is the measurement of the reload speed of all five or four shots in the magazine when you actually have a Lunafaction Rift on the ground and you can reload things as fast as possible. The actual reload speed of this weapon is actually really slow. Outside of using Marksman's Dodge on a Hunter, this thing is gonna take a lot of your time reloading. Behind cover is usually okay, but it's gonna be quite cumbersome. Oftentimes, this weapon does so much damage so fast that the enemy's health just pops back up because it can't even calculate how much damage you did. To demonstrate this, if I change the adjusted RPM, which is supposed to include the reload time, back over to 360, you can see the DPS goes to 86,000. Up next, at number eight, we have the Imperial Decree. Now, I have been toting the shotgun as being the king of PvE specials for a very long time. The fact that it's a legendary weapon, it's one of the best legendary specials in the entire game. It's a shotgun, meaning it's pretty easy to use, albeit a little bit dangerous in the high level play, and you can get some pretty insane full ammo and DPS damage out of this weapon. Now the obvious reason you use this is for trench barrel. You cannot use auto loading with trench barrel unfortunately, since it's in the same column, but you have good options like Grave Arbor to reload for you automatically, or full auto to shoot a little bit faster. If you don't know, full auto increases your RPM by around 10%. So Imperial Decree, in my opinion, I just started leaning towards it over the Ikelos for quite a while now. It just does more damage per shot, it allows you to take out those majors a little bit heavier handed, and of course it doesn't suffer that much from having to punch every three shots with the Imperial Decree, whereas the Rapid Fire suffer a lot because their advantage is going to be their RPM, which is getting stuffed by the fact they have to reload or not reload, they have to punch. So generally I've been trending more towards the aggressive and lightweight frames and they're just doing really well. Speaking of which, at number seven, we have the Seven Seraph CQC-12 Trench Barrel. In my opinion, is gonna be the straight up upgrade to the Akello shotgun. You can see the fact that it has around the same full ammo damage and way more DPS on top of the fact that it has the God Roll. Trench Barrel plus auto loading. If you have a Trench Barrel auto loading Seven Seraph CQC-12, you've got, in my opinion, the best shot, legendary shotgun in the game. And again, I mention this over and over and over again. If you have specials or heavy with auto loading, 
it is so much more effective and so much better. During DPS, you can fire all the shots, switch to your other weapon, special or heavy, use the shots on that, switch back to it, and it's automatically loaded. It's fast, it's efficient, it's convenient, and it's very nice to have. If you ever see a good weapon with auto-loading, like Loaded Question, like Seven Seraph, you're gonna, and like Ariana's Vow, you're gonna have a good time. And I think, uh, actually, Wither Horde, yeah, it, the catalyst gives it auto-loading. There's a lot of great stuff. Coming up at number six in this top 10 countdown, we have the Lord of Wolves. In my opinion, the more consistent, easier to use version than the fourth horseman that doesn't necessarily need the catalyst, but it, it the catalyst does help with the reload speed, which is nice. Now, I'd like to direct your attention on the spreadsheet to the fact that crit factor for release the wolves is 30% compared to the 70% of Lord of Wolves, and it still does better DPS. Now, it is a lot harder to control, and you really do have to barrel stuff the enemy because the thing just goes straight left and right sometimes but if you get used to this weapon even the regular form you have to get used to it it can do some pretty impressive dps at a comfortable slug shotgun range but you do have to get used to it i've said this three times now this weapon it feels weak when you first use it but when you get used to it you get those headshots it can be pretty saucy Moving on to number five in this top 10 list, the number one worst damage dealing weapon in this entire list, we have the Divinity, the ultimate support weapon. Now this does a lot of things. First of all, the damage it deals is not really that important. The main reason you use it is gonna be for this Judgment perk, where sustained damage with this weapon envelops the target in a field, makes this little blue bubble around it, that weakens it, meaning it takes 30% more damage from all sources, and it disrupts them, meaning that they're stunned a little bit and they deal less damage. Something that not a lot of people realize is that disrupting makes them deal less damage. And on top of that, that little bubble field that it makes guarantees a crit anywhere shot on that bubble. So if you're using a divinity while doing a raid DPS or a, a champion DPS, you can put a bubble on the target, weakening them, making them do less damage, guaranteeing crits for your teammates. If you're using divinity plus his Nagi with the honed edge catalyst, nearly one shots a barrier champion in Grandmaster Nightfall. So using divinity is really useful in a lot of different ways. Oh, and it's also overload rounds. So you can use it against overload champions. It's so good for so many different reasons in so many different ways for nightfalls and raids. Up next at number four, we have the Wither Horde. Now, if you actually see here, the Wither Horde has some pretty poor DPS all the way near the bottom of the list while still maintaining a ridiculous amount of full ammo damage. Now, the key here is that there's two ways to use the Wither Horde. You can either shoot the Wither Horde at the floor and have a puddle on the ground hitting many enemies, or you can direct impact a single target and they will take tick damage over time in a similar way, but take it with them. And you can do both at the same time. So if you're doing floor plus direct damage on a single target, your DPS can be around 13,000 while maintaining a 1.3 million full ammo damage. Very similar to the ways that Anarchy works, where you wanna just pop it down and then switch to another weapon. Consider this for a second. You take around maybe four or five seconds to fire two shots at a target, making them do 13,000 DPS. Then you switch over to your heavy sword, which does around 40,000 DPS. You add those two together, you have some of the highest DPS in the entire game. That is in part why I think that the Wither Horde is going to be the mountaintop replacement. On top of the fact that, again, it has ridiculous full ammo damage, which is really important for Grandmaster Nightfalls. You're not always looking for the best DPS. A lot of times you're looking for a good full ammo damage, how long it lasts before it completely runs out of ammo, which is why I would never use the fourth horseman in a Grandmaster Nightfall. It just does not have a lot of ammo, does not have a lot of full ammo damage, and it's also very not safe, whereas uh, with a Horde, you can use it from good ranges. My recommendation is to pair with a Horde with a high DPS weapon, like a sword. So in Grandmaster Nightfalls, you're using this for like the reg regular fodder for the major enemies. And when you get to the champion, you stun them and then you just sort them down. You can't really do that with the Wither Horde. And it's an exotic, meaning that there is no sunset level for it. So keep this in mind, it's probably gonna last for quite a long time and get the catalyst. The catalyst gives it auto-loading, which is obviously insane. Coming up at number three in this top 10 countdown, we have the Izanagi's Burden, times four, honed edge, plus the catalyst gives you a ridiculous 70,000 damage with a single shot. Now this is obviously relative to the activity that I use, which is the Lost Sector uh, boss in Cargo Bay 3, but as you can tell with all the other numbers, there's literally nothing else that's even close, remotely close to this damage. The downside obviously is you have to reload between every single shot. 
that is not really that big of a problem. If you remember what I said before, the ability to shoot a target, go behind cover, fully reload, and then go back out behind cover while maintaining this kind of DPS, which is still significant and good DPS, is very powerful, especially in Grandmaster Nightfalls and in Raids. If you want to deal a ridiculous burst damage, Izanagi's Burden is going to be your best bet. The big downside is the fact that it is a sniper, meaning that it can not be used in close range. So use a good close range like a sword to pair up with it. Coming up at number two in this top 10 countdown, we have the Ariana's Vow. Now this weapon actually surprised me by how high the DPS number is for it. Now that's not to say I didn't use it. I use this pretty religiously in my Grandmaster and Master Nightfalls because of its crazy ability with barrier rounds to destroy uh, barrier champions barrier very quickly, much faster than any other primary ammo option can and it has good range it has auto loading with a catalyst it has nine shots with the catalyst it has good full ammo good full ammo damage it, it's a hand cannon so if you're using double hand cannon you get two uh, you can use perks on your armor for both of them you can use it in like the double special combo with mountaintop plus ariana's vow to get a ridiculously high amount of damage while still maintaining ammo it, I, I trip over myself when i talk about this because ariana's vow is wonderful if you don't have this weapon, go to Raul. You can get this weapon for an exotic cipher, and it is absolutely worth it. Not only for the fact that it's just useful by itself, but when you start doing nightfalls with it, you'll see it's gangbusters. And finally, at number one, we have the Mountaintop. Now, most people know the Mountaintop is one of the best weapons in the game. First and foremost, the DPS is not really out of this world. It's not the crazy DPS you'd expect or you see from some of these shotguns from Loaded Question, from Izanagi's Burden. It's not that kind of DPS, and its full ammo damage is respectable, but it's not like uh, the Wither Horde. Why is it that this is the number one weapon? It's the number one for a number of reasons. Firstly, its base damage, 26,000, is just way higher than everything else around it. Another kinetic, spike grenade, malicious bird threat does 18,000 compared to its 26. So off the bat, it's already cheating. Secondly, it's lightweight, meaning that you run faster with it. Thirdly, that it shoots perfectly straight and very fast, meaning you can snipe targets with it far distances, which I do all the time. And fourthly, probably the biggest part, is that it explodes on impact with the surface. Every other grenade launcher in the game outside of Wither Horde it bounces off of surfaces and it pisses me off. Not only for the fact that you deal less damage with the explosion, oftentimes you're not getting that impact damage, which is the entire point of Spike Grenade. This weapon is going to be sorely missed with the sunset. I gotta tell you, I've been using it for a very, very long time and it was very, very useful. But looking into the future, we might get ourselves a new version of Mountaintop outside of Wither Horde. We might get literally a new version of Mountaintop, maybe within the next few seasons. So keep an eye out for that. Anyways, that's going to be pretty much the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, concerns, or something that I missed, something that you'd want me to take a look at, or if you just wanted to say, hi, I like the color green. Let me know in the comments down below. I love how that rhymes. Of course, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more of these. If you did like the video and you want to see more of these spreadsheets, more of these top 10, make sure you leave a like and subscribe because they take a lot of work. I've been working literally all week and I'm doing this voiceover in the heat because I can't turn my AC on while I do this voiceover. So it's hot. Anyways, I got to go. I got to turn this AC on. I hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.